Yeah, thank you uh, once again to the university for this opportunity to talk to everybody on a very important topic. Uh, this is called free and open source software. Uh, some of you might have already heard about it. Uh, but I'm sure that when we discuss many more ideas may come to our mind. Uh, I'll just start with the slides and then we will go one by one. Yeah, uh, you all can read this uh, interesting WhatsApp uh, joke that I got sometime. Can you tell me, can anybody explain what the joke is? You can read it. I hope you are able to see the... If you're able to see the screen, you can see the joke. Can anybody explain what is the joke? So basically it means Mark Zuckerberg has all our information. Hmm. Yes, sir. Our yeah. identity is with him. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, the joke is very clear that you, you cannot afford to fight with Mark Zuckerberg because <laughs> Even if you are in the right, actually Mark Zuckerberg's car has hit your car. So normally you will be he, very angry he's selling, and say how... He's selling our identity and earnings, sir. <laughs> yeah, he's selling our identity. So normally he's selling, he's only making money. But in this case, he can put you in trouble also. Because he knows all the intimate secrets of your life. So that being the case, he can put you in trouble as well. That is a joke here. And uh, that is because of this new phenomena we are calling as platformization. So if you look at the entire... Today's world, of course, for a long time we have been telling this is the world of digital tech, this is the world of digital technologies, right? Ever since the last 10, 15 years, faculty in colleges have been told era of ICT is here, era of ICT is here, digital technology has become popular, we had adopted. But digital technology itself has undergone different kinds of changes over time. Current phase of digital technology is called platform. So we are we call today's economy as platform economy. We also call it as platform society. So these are the two terms, platform society and platform economy that is used. So what are these platforms? So we know that as far as, let's say, a train, you have to go and catch a train. You have to go to a platform. You can only get the train in the platform. So as far as the consumer is concerned, you enjoy the facility of a product or a service through the benefit of the platform. Likewise, the producer also makes the good available through the platform. So even the train driver, or the railways, they can reach the service of train to you only through the platform. Normally, when we think of platform, we think what is there in a railway platform? There is nothing big, right? We are we, we are happy about trains. Uh, we like all those things, but we think platform is something very unimportant. But you just think, supposing the platform, who owns a platform, let's say the station master, he refuses you permission to enter the platform. He says that you cannot enter the platform or you have to pay a thousand rupees to enter the platform. If the platform owner starts dictating terms, then the person who is a consumer is affected. Likewise, the platform station master can tell, I will not allow this train to stop in the station. I will not allow the train to pass through this particular station. Then the whole railways gets affected. So although traditionally platform in our mind is like a very minimal minor thing, but when we hear about digital platforms, they have the power to control both the producer as well as the consumer. And today's society is called platform society, economy is called platform economy because we are seeing more and more platforms come in the world. So some of the names that I have put in the top of the slide, they're all platforms. So Google is a platform. It gives us information. The search engine gives us information. Google Translate, Google Maps, all of them give information. So it's an information platform. Facebook is a networking, social networking platform. Amazon is an e-commerce platform. Uber Ola is a transportation platform. Suki Zamato is a food platform. Anybody else can think of any more platforms? Can few of you suggest any more platforms that is left out of this? Any other examples of platforms that you might have been using or you're aware? Anybody can say. Can anybody suggest any examples? Yes, Twitter is a platform. So just like very similar to Facebook, Twitter is also a social networking platform. It's called a micro blog. So you write small. Uh, so the different people who use Twitter, they're connected through the Twitter platform. Advertisers on Twitter platform also connect through the Twitter platform. So consumers, advertisers, 
we are all connected through the platform which is owned by twitter company any other platforms you are familiar you have used so stock telegram. market telegram share market sir telegram is also uh share market is not a digital platform of course trading you can use trading platforms but any particular name you have got in mind but sir in educational byju's and all sir like byju's yeah so educational there is a platform and byju's is a education platform even google is an education platform because for example we are using google meet now so google is also an education platform it is trying to connect Uh, teachers and students on the platform, but Bajus is also an education platform. Stock exchange. So there are more and more platforms in every stock exchange. Why do you say it is bringing people together? It's playing a role, but uh, it, there is no one platform used by all stock exchanges. Is there one platform used by all stock exchanges, Sujata Madam? Ah, uh, Bombay Stock Exchange, uh, Petra Stock Exchange. The people who wanted to uh, buy and sell shares on online, they do online trading. Well, But is the same that. platform used by all stock exchanges? Ah uh, yes, sir. They have a separate account now uh, for uh, trading. No, no. The digital platform has a particular meaning. See, every broker is not called a platform. Okay. So sir. the stock exchange example is not correct because stock exchange is a is a broking place for buyers and sellers to come together. But if there is one digital company that is making the software. and all the stock exchanges are using that software then it will be called the stock exchange platform you understand so but i don't think so i think each stock exchange may be having its own uh, technology infrastructure so far we don't have a single like for example between bsc and nsc nsc is much more technologically savvy so but nsc's technology platform may be only used by nsc they may have developed it in house so railway sells so uses technology they have their own railways platform railway software But we don't call it a platform because platform typically, if you look at Google or Facebook, it is used by people across the world. Single platform is used by people across the world. So if tomorrow somebody makes a stock exchange platform, and every stock exchange is starting to use it, or many stock exchanges use it, then that company becomes powerful, and then we call it a platform. I hope the meaning is clear now. Yes, sir. What about Zerodha and Upstocks? Yeah. So Zerodha is a company that's providing a service. if zerodha's platform starts being used by more and more people you know where 60% if you take facebook for example or you take twitter for example they are like near monopolies because everybody goes to them when everybody goes to them that platform becomes a dominant platform but i am actually your point is also right we can say there are dominant platforms and there are uh, there are software platforms which are aiming to become dominant so zerodha may be intending or having ambition to become the platform that everybody should use for uh, buying and selling shares in that case it will become a dominant platform but we can probably call zerodha as a uh, platform which desires to become dominant even byju's may be in that space it intends to become dominant but many platforms have already become dominant like google amazon if you want to do e shopping you typically mostly you will go to amazon or flipkart but like that you know big bazaar uh, big basket many platforms are trying to become more and more popular they are trying to become monopolies that is an important thing about a platform that it tries to become a monopoly in the economy and you can see that last line what i have said platforms get huge funding to become monopoly in the space what is the reason in the case of a platform we find over a period of time it will become a monopoly or oligopoly that is there will be very few sellers we won't have 20 amazon companies in e-commerce we won't have 20 companies like google uh, offering search engine which are popular you won't have 20 companies like facebook which are doing social networking you might have one company or two company or at the most three companies that's why ola ola and uber in india it's ola and uber in some other country it is grab and uber so country to country it varies but normally there will be only two or three uh, platforms can anybody uh, have a reason why there is only monopoly or oligop oligopoly in the platform market anybody can give a suggestion Uh, which platforms are very user friendly than that become uh, popular and become uh, uh, what uh, yeah. uh, so if i may add in uh, management we have something called a rule of 
wherein uh, the oh. big best players usually merge and acquire the younger ones and they uh, run the show hmm. so that's maybe one reason why it's so Mm, that is not really true. See, big rule of three may be more like a general theory we may have in management. But if you look at FMGC business, for example, consumer goods, there will be at least four or five consumer goods uh, companies in a in a particular econ economic space market. But digitally, there is a special reason why you have monopoly. So we should so not. Maybe there is a special reason for minimum uh, companies in the non-digital space. For example, you are looking at your uh, Kirana Garana. You are looking at your retail. A seller, you know, or you're looking at a small restaurant, they are not, there will be hundreds and thousands in a particular uh, place. But we are talking specifically of digital, that the number becomes less. So popularity is one reason, but that is not probably the uh, main reason or the only reason. Can you think of other reasons why we have monopolies in the digital space? So the uh, platforms are apps uh, which are very user friendly and uh, they become popular and become also the monopoly in that particular field sir like ola that and is uh, that is already said i'm looking for other reasons already user friendly has been said any other reason other than user friendly we think that the platforms are yeah, you know, good for us or you know they try to make us happy but any other reason is there yes dr victor free 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 resources sir free hope but free is not a reason for monopoly because 20 more people can come and offer it free, you know. Why should something features become... Features offered, sir. Huh? Features offered by each apps. Again, user-friendly. Same thing you are saying. Can anybody think of another reason? Quality. Okay, very important. Okay, let me now explain. See, we are so... This is natural that we are all so happy with the platforms that we have. Because Google is giving us free information. Google Maps helps us to find places easily without charging us money. Google Translate allows us to translate from language to language again without charging money. So mentally, the average person in, in a market is very positively predisposed towards platforms. But that is the reason we allow exploitation. Already people said Facebook collects our data, sells our data. We don't seem to mind. We are quite happy that somebody is selling our data. We are not worried about the vulnerability we have simply because we think that they are doing good things for us. But one important thing you must understand, the main reason for the monopoly is proprietary standards. So for example, there was a Google had a software called Orkut, like Facebook, Facebook platform only Orkut was also there. But or when Facebook became popular, Orkut became less popular. The reason is that if I'm using Orkut and you're using Facebook, we cannot communicate with each other. Although both are social networking platforms. But that is not the case with email. So if I am having, I am using Gmail, and somebody else is using Rediff Mail, and somebody else is using Hotmail. Although these are different companies, still we can send email to one another. The reason is that email is an open specification. Any software can, if so long as it follows the email specifications, it can become a software that will send email or receive email. But Facebook, when it made the Facebook platform, it made the standard proprietary to itself. So Orkut cannot communicate with Facebook. Facebook cannot communicate with Orkut. So when Facebook becomes more and more popular, you will find that people will say, why should I use Orkut? Because all my friends are on Facebook. So I will move from Orkut to Facebook. Similarly, if you take Microsoft Word, for example, it is not true today. It was true 20 years before. I use LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a free software. But people, now it is not a problem. But 20 years back, if you're using LibreOffice and you send a document to a Microsoft word user, they cannot open the document. They will simply tell, I am not able to open your document. So Microsoft Office used proprietary standards because of which it cannot allow to open LibreOffice documents or open office documents. So proprietary standards are used. So Uber has a software, supposing some other company, Ola is having a software and some other company makes a software and the information about the vehicle availability, let's say I am an auto driver. If I am saying that, Ola also, I want to be a Ola driver, I want to be a Uber driver, I want to be a Grab driver, I want to be a Lyft driver. If they're all using the same specifications, I don't need to have four apps in my phone. Today, you will be having Ola app also on your phone separate, Uber also app also on your phone separate, because the standards used by each of these platforms is proprietary. Means it is a different, their own standards. You must imagine that standards are like roads. Now, Maruti company makes a car, Hyundai company makes a car, but road is common for everybody. If the road is going to be separate for each company, then each company will build its own roads. 
that is what is happening in the digital space where facebook has its own standards facebook will not allow other companies to copy its standards because it is proprietary it is owned by facebook that is the reason for monopolies and oligopolies to come in the digital platform space that makes us exploited because we all know that i mean pinky madam will also tell that in economic situation where we have monopolies there the consumer is going to be weaker compared to perfect competition when there is a lot of competition when there is a lot of competition then you will find that the consumer is benefited because the the sellers cannot exploit the buyer but when there is a monopoly like in the digital space we have no choice we we think we are getting free free gmail is free google maps is free facebook is free but actually it's not free because they are taking our data they are selling our data without our permission we don't even know what data they are collecting from us and what they are selling you saw that joke also that mr that person could not argue zuckerberg because zuckerberg controls you completely they have all the information about you google has all the information about you so it is creating a situation where consumers are exploited and consumers are not even aware of it they are accepting the exploitation that is happening anybody has any questions on what i have said is it clear is it not clear i can explain again this is a very important thing to understand same thing is happening in education we are going to come to byju's so i want us to understand that monopolies are created in the platform space monopolies by definition become harmful to the interest of the producers and to the consumers here the monopoly is not a producer the monopoly is a platform the monopoly is a middleman the middleman is controlling both the producer as well as the con consumer anybody has any questions just yes, madam go ahead yeah so can you please explain proprietary standards whether they mean mm -hmm. um, copyrights patents and these trademarks are we talking in that direction yes so proprietary is enforced through copyright and patent and trademarks the copyright patent trademarks are the methods of enforcing proprietary uh, uh, technologies so facebook has a software which is proprietary it will use a copyright uh, uh, framework available to prevent that software being available to other people uh, yes, not so only intellectual property rights prevent... is what i can understand yeah. right yes yes so intellectual property again you know personally uh, there are people who have problem with the term because intellect should not be seen as property but you are right you you give the three components of what is popularly called as ip you know the term ip personally i think is problematic we should not use that term but the components of ip are what you mentioned copyrights patents and trademarks there are three different things authors have copyright over their creation uh, patents also when you produce some new product or process you can have a patent over it and trademarks are businesses you know like i have a logo i can or i have a famous name i can use it as a trademark so copyrights patents and trademarks are the three components of what is loosely called intellectual property personally as a teacher i am i don't like that term because i don't think my intellect creations can be called my property because like my house is my property or like this headset is my property i will use the headset i cannot give it to other people personally each of us has our property but knowledge should never be seen as a property of a person because whatever knowledge i am having i have got it from other people there is no knowledge i have, i cannot tell i created all the knowledge myself and it belongs to me or i have purchased it the knowledge that i have got i have got from other people and likewise i will also share the knowledge with other people i create the knowledge with other people so that's why if you remember isaac newton uh, he said whatever i have discovered i have discovered by standing on the shoulders of giants so problem is software companies technology companies want to create property of the intellect itself and or not only software companies even drug companies whatever knowledge we are creating that we are trying to make it as a property by which we are telling this will not be made available to other people so uh, you are right the correct uh, the framework for proprietizing is the copyright uh, patent and the trademark framework thank you sir yeah anybody else has any question but i will also talk in today's session about how the copyright itself can be used differently so that it is not creating proprietary so that i will talk about in today's session that same copyright framework can be used to create a proprietary situation same copyright can be used to create an open situation so we will talk about both and i will argue that we all need to look at the open framework for example the previous session you were talking about swayam courses they are open courses why are they called open courses we need to have understanding of that anybody has any other question to ask
is it clear is it not clear yes it is clear sir okay we'll go ahead so this slide if you see this is a typical operation of a platform so one example if you look at we understand all examples are somewhat similar only so uber and ola when they started operations in india initially to make themselves popular they used to give discounts to both the driver as well as to the consumer so if there is a auto on the road that auto if you take it will charge 100 rupees but if you book through ola ola used to give the same ride for 50 rupees initially they used to give lesser fare than the auto on the road so we all made ola a habit go book an ola instead of taking the ola on the road plus we know it's very convenient because you know exactly when it is going to come uh, it will always 90% time an auto will land up at your doorstep and you also know how long it will take to reach the destination you do not give directions to the driver you can make a digital payment so there are a lot of conveniences of having a ola instead of going to the auto on the road similarly for the driver also they used to give lot of incentives they would say that if you complete so many rides you will get extra money from us so initially they indulged in practices which got them large number of drivers and large number of consumers by giving discounts to both but once they became popular once they became the default then they have started exploiting both the drivers and the consumers so you all would know in every city ola drivers go on strike uber drivers go on strike because the commissions charged by ola and uber on the ride they are very very high percentage of the total ride so i don't know if you are all familiar now for example in bangalore for a long time where i stay minimum charge ola will be charging 100 rupees even if i have to go 1 km distance ola minimum charge is 100 rupees it is actually not right because minimum fare in bangalore is 30 rupees for 2 km and it will give the driver also much lesser for on a ride of let's say if the ride fare is 400 rupees 100 rupees commission ola will take which is very very high you know 25 30% commission is extremely high use of the platform commission 5% or 2% because the volumes are very large you must understand every second thousands of people are hiring the ola ola and uber so it is earning huge commissions but 30% 25% commission means both the driver is exploited as well as the consumer is exploited so the model of the middleman is very clear we all learned in economics in school that in the olden agricultural days the middleman used to exploit the farmer by providing very less price for the produce and the middleman will exploit the consumer by charging a very high price for the uh, value added product so today's middlemen are more powerful than the middlemen of yesteryears these middlemen not only they exploit the consumer and the producer they will also collect information about both so drivers information will be with ola consumers information will be with ola they will harvest this information using uh, algorithms to create what is called as machine learning we also use the term artificial intelligence that term is popular but the correct technical term is machine learning they use machine learning to create more and more knowledge for themselves and create value added services by which they can make lot of money so initially platforms may be making losses but once they become a monopoly they can make huge profits so today if you see today's world the biggest companies in the world are the digital companies so alphabet which owns google meta which owns, which owns facebook these are the richest companies in the world amazon is a very rich company jeff bezos the owner of amazon is the richest person in the world so these platforms have become exploitative mechanisms by which they make a lot of money this is the technology implementation that is common in today's world not only they become money wise powerful they also become politically very powerful so if you see platforms are causing lot of imbalances in the social and political economy of today and of today okay so i want to go to the next point which is therefore education so education is also another field where platforms are trying to take over education so byju's we already know is a very popular name byju's spend so much money it's an education entity but you cannot even dream that your university <coughs> your university or college will sponsor the indian cricket team which must be the most expensive thing that you can imagine but byju's has been sponsoring the indian cricket team for several years now sharuk khan will come on byju's ads byju's even sponsor the football fifa which is a very expensive thing so a lot of money which could go to education is going in marketing because finally these platforms <clears throat> their main expense is going to become marketing because they will persuade more and more people to join them so teachers will be persuaded to join by juice to provide content to them students of course will be persuaded to join by juice so that they can pay for the services or even get services 
free from Baidu's. So what will the education platform do? You can see on the slide, the education platform will provide content, it will provide activities, it will provide assessment to the students. And it will try to become the default learning space for uh, displacing schools and colleges. So Baidu's already has given out advertisements long back saying, why do you need a school? You don't need a school. Why do you need college? You don't need college. You don't need coaching classes. You don't need anything because all that is going to be available in Baidu's. And Baidu's wants to become a monopoly so that everybody will depend on Baidu's and Baidu's will can make, start making money from us. Baidu's may even give some products free of cost, but it will make money by collecting data from us. That is the, that is the model of Baidu's. Same model Google also has got. Same model TikTok has got. They all want to become education platforms that will provide education services to uh, uh, students uh, in a, over a period of time. Any questions? You can read this slide also. So teachers are the producers of knowledge. We will produce content. We will give it to Baiju's. Baiju's will start hosting it on its own platform. And over a period of time, they won't need teachers because they will say, anyway, the content is there. Anyway, your videos are there. Once your video is available, then we can play the video. Students will understand. Then why do we need a teacher? This is going to become the uh, process that is going to become more and more popular. It is going to have a serious impact on school education. But before it impacts school education, certainly it's going to impact college education also. More and more colleges are going to feel the pressure of online education and e-education. Yes, you can read the slide. I'm not reading out the slide points, but you can read the slide. And if you have any questions, you can ask. So this is called the platformization phenomena and education also is being platformized. We are having platforms come into education space also. So do people feel that in five years time, 10 years time, Baidu's will displace many of us? What do people feel? What is likely to happen? What may happen? Sir, excuse me. Yes, sir, is there, Victor, sir is, there, is there any mechanism to check the data theft? Because so far we are not able to pass even DPDP 2020-21. And then is there any mechanism? Say it again, sir. Mechanism for what? Uh, to check the data theft. To check the data theft. Huh? Very important point. So actually data theft is the correct word because Without your knowledge, they are taking your data. So, of course, what happens is, you know, in all the software, decisions. In the end, they will tell, "I agree," right? It's called yes. EULA, End User License Agreement. All of us, without even thinking, we go and click the "I agree" because we don't have time to read it. So, the company will argue that they are not stealing because you have given your consent for giving your data. But it is not really genuine consent because. We are forced to give the consent, we give the consent. Even Facebook will tell, you know, to use Facebook before you log in, you have to registration, you have to say agree. And they will keep on changing the terms every now and then. So they will argue it's not data theft, but we know that really speaking, the data is taken without our knowledge, without our consent. Uh, we don't even know what all data they're taking. So laws have to be put in place. And many countries have been struggling with this idea. Europe passed something called the uh, GDPR, that is the Generalized Data Protection Rules, a few years back, that allows some rights for the customers and consumers to prevent data from being stolen from them. India currently doesn't have a law, although uh, there is something called the Personal Data Protection Bill, PDP it's called, Personal Data Protection PDP. Bill, for many, yeah, PDP, many years the Parliament, PDP. Uh, committee, yeah, PDP, Personal Data Protection Bill, Parliamentary Committee uh, has given some recommendations Government has rejected it. Again, it is being formed. And second time, PDP bill has come. Many people say that the PDP bill in its current form will not actually protect consumers. It may make them vulnerable to the companies. It will also make them vulnerable to government because government is also collecting data from us through Aadhaar, linking everything to Aadhaar. It is collecting data from us. And government also can be dangerous for citizens. Not only in India, all over the world, that danger is there from governments also. So we are but, under twin attack from the companies and from the but governments. So, so far in India, sir, but so far in India, we do not have that any law other than the IT rules 2011. No, we don't have. The personal data yes, protection yes. bill is supposed to be passed to protect our interests, but, but not yet passed. No, but to, it was supposed to be passed in 2023, mm. but it was not yet passed. 
Yes, because the government has come out with new draft uh, bill, and that is being uh, discussed now. And many yeah, people are that's... afraid that this new draft bill is not going to protect our interests. That's what people fear. Yes, sir. Go ahead. PDP is called Personal Data Protection Bill. Yeah. Yes. No, no. DPDP, sir. It is data, uh, data, digital personal and data protection. Okay. Okay. No problem. Earlier it was D called PDP. Maybe the name has changed now. So basically, it's a data protection. Yeah. It's personal data. There are two kinds of data: personal data and non-personal data. So this is the personal data protection that we are talking about now. No, no. Are you talking about that uh, law which were uh, dropped up by Justice B. N. Krishna? Yeah, Sri Krishna. It was yeah. That was the Krishna Sri Krishna Commission Justice, collected information yeah, yeah, and input to the government. Sri Krishna. Yeah. Yeah, that is DPDP, that, sir. Like. Okay, fine. DPDP. Yeah, that's what you are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? What do people feel about education, Dr. Shamla? What do you feel? Do you think that platforms will come? Byju's will become a platform like today. Ola and Uber are determining the driver's life. Like that, Byju's will start determining our life. Shamla, madam. Yes, I accept your words, sir. Maybe uh, <laughs> after ten years. <laughs> after uh, ten years. Maybe. What will you do, madam? How will you handle it? Now, uh, even in the school level, the students are using this Byju's, sir. Yeah. But in the mm. college, uh, we are using on the Google. By using mm. the Google, we are searching all the information. Yeah, but you see the danger because see, we may think that our area by is not there. It's not difficult for by for every course. We are teaching a course on let's say economics, yeah. or you're teaching a course on management. Yes. Slowly they will start making video lectures. Slowly they will start creating the quizzes. What we are using yes. Moodle, I think they may use. And they may create an alternative to the. At least they will say they are creating an alternative, and many people yeah. may accept it also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Ratna, what do you feel? Dr. Ratna Patil, are you there? I'm randomly yes. asking questions. Yes, Dr. Ratna Patil, where do you teach? So student, student will accept, sir. Student will exist, but will teacher exist? Yes, sir. Okay. How are you confident? What do you teach, madam? Where are you teaching? Sir, uh, uh, commerce, sir. My subject is commerce, sir. I am teaching income tax and uh, cost accounting. Income tax and cost accounting. Where are you teaching, madam? Uh, SI College, uh, Naregal, sir, from Karnataka, sir. Okay, okay. So income tax, for example, I am a chartered accountant by background. So income tax, if I make videos on income tax, I explain the income tax rules, income tax procedures, and I have the frequently asked questions and I make some quizzes. After that, why will I want to attend a class on income tax? Anytime I can go to the uh, YouTube and see the videos. No, madam. It's like earlier we used to all watch TV because TV will put on and we will see the program that is being there. Nowadays, nobody watches TV because Netflix and Amazon, you can see whenever you want to see. I want to see a movie. I don't even go to the theater. I will just put Netflix on when it's convenient to me at 10 in the night and I'll see it. So same way income tax or cost accounting, any of these accounting areas. Once I have good lectures or very good teachers, which is explaining the, you know, the complexity of cost accounting or different cost accounting methods. After some time, I, will, I, I, I attend a teacher's class for cost accounting or income tax. Do you think that problem may be there, madam? Exactly, sir. Uh, whatever we handle in the uh, traditional classes, we access more information in the online classes. Hmm. So the danger is there, no, madam, that whoever wants information, instead of attending a class, they will get the information from a video. And income tax and yes. all is information only. Beyond the point, there is no, it's not like sociology or anthropology where there may be some contested term or something like that. Mostly income tax, there are the rules, the act is there, the rules are there. It's not so difficult to learn mm -hmm. by getting the information. So some subjects yes, may be more vulnerable than other subjects. Yes, sir. Really, sir. The income tax mm -hmm. rules are goes on changing yearly, sir. So That is true. But the Baijus will make yearly videos. For them, it is not a problem. They have to just get two, three teachers 
they make the video the video is available to everybody you know they don't have to call 100 teachers to make the video two teachers will explain the new rules this year's budget what has happened ltc has changed this has changed you make a video it's not so difficult so there may be a problem suman sir do you want to say something dr suman you are saying something about students uh, yes uh, they may lose their interest on face to face learning uh, they will not come in mm. the classroom uh, they will mm. prefer that uh, from their home Uh, to take some video learning etc so will be support as a teacher uh, face to face learning there is a, so many benefits and uh, online teaching there is also some benefits but it's it should be blended mode i mean face to face as well as online but when we are students will be getting everything in his hand in his home in mm. his bedroom then why what for they will come in the classroom what for they will uh, i mean uh, to complete the entire session 5 or 6 hours and uh, that's why there may be some problem in near future time Mm. And sometimes yes, another aspect, well, yes, uh, maybe maybe reduced, because it's possible to complete mm. like a particular uh, department within two or three teachers. Why they will accept four, five, six teachers? So in future yeah. there is another problem may create. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, departments strength may come down. Institutions also can close down because if there are three colleges in the area, they'll say why. If students can name well and online. They can sit in their bedroom and learn. Then one institution itself can handle thousand students. Why should you need five institutions for thousand students? So these kind of challenges are more likely to happen as we go ahead because government is also pushing online learning. So we all know UGC is saying forty percent courses should be blended or open. So when more and more pushing is happening in the direction of online learning, certainly it's going to impact in terms of the uh, students' need for the teaching. anybody has a different point of view that uh, this is no there is no problem everything will be fine or something else we are not discussed so far anybody has a different point of view dr sharmila what is your opinion yes sir <clears throat> we are from teacher education background sir most of the students are from rural areas only mm. they are not aware of the byju saab sir and so on sir Mm. Uh, that they are using YouTube videos. Hmm. Some urban area students can use utilize their digital platform too. But Dr. Sharmila, don't you think that over a period of time, of course, always the gap will be there. But more and more rural students also are getting the uh, smartphones. Connectivity is improving in the rural areas. So even rural areas over a period of time. the danger that we are seeing in urban areas that students are watching youtube byjus will say that instead of watching youtube i'll give everything packaged it very nicely so i can create a course on a particular area so so therefore uh, you know no need to watch 20 videos i'll make it into a nice program so whatever you are teaching instead of that there are some videos and there are some quizzes and therefore everything can be learned easily so uh, what do you teach madam Sir, we are a teacher education. Sir, education. Teacher education, yeah, teacher education. So, teacher education, of course, is very complex area. But same problem can arise everywhere, and it may not happen one day. You know, it is not that tomorrow suddenly you are going to a thousand videos. But by just is keeping on making videos. So, even in teacher education, contemporary issues in education may be, of course, something that we keep changing from time to time. But you say philosophy of education. Yes. You want to understand what is Radha Krishnan's philosophy of education. You can have make some five or ten nice videos. Somebody explaining philosophy of education according to Radha Krishnan very well. Then uh, they'll say, "Why do you need to cover that in the classroom? Just see the video; you can understand." If you have doubts, then you can maybe ask a teacher. But that, therefore, the requirement for the traditional ways of teaching that requirement is going to become uh, lesser and lesser. So there are some parameters of technology that I have put on the slide. I went to the next slide. You can just see these uh, uh, parameters of. Uh, that are there in digital technology which is going to impact the way teaching learning happens so again uh, any questions so there is a person called postman he was a faculty in a new york in new york university he is no more now so he did a lot of study on technology and of course his study was not digital technology he died you know in the beginning of this millennium so but still what he says applies to digital technologies also so you can see the points that are there on the slide anybody has anything to ask any question any comment we can discuss that but you can see that whether it is a large dam initially the benefit is seen of the technology but the harm will be visible much later on only so even digital technology right now we are seeing the benefit that 
I go to Twitter, I go to Facebook, I go to Google search quickly, I'm getting the benefit. But the cost of this in terms of control by Google of our lives, Facebook's control of our lives, the harms are going to be visible only much later on. So for example, already there is research, you know, last year, Facebook carried out research on Instagram. Instagram is a software, is a platform very popular with young people. All your students who are teenagers or early adults, they will all be using Instagram. And the study conducted by Facebook itself, which, you know, Meta, the company name is Meta, they own Instagram. The study very clearly said that teenagers are undergoing depression because of Instagram. Everybody is going to Instagram. They're posting nice photos of themselves having good time. Other people who are not having the same good time, when they go to Instagram and see the people having a good time, it creates negative uh, emotions in their mind. So there is a study by Facebook which said that Instagram is the biggest cause for depression in young people. So what is it doing to all of us? This is something we need to understand. So same way, whether uh, Instagram is doing it for the young people, Facebook may be doing it for us. How much we're addicted to Facebook? How does it impact our emotions? How is it impacting our relationship with other people? These are questions that we may uh, have to answer because we may be the Facebook generation. Our students are the Instagram generation. Yeah, any questions, any comments from anybody? Feel free. I'm not necessarily explaining everything one by one. But we can, I can discuss anything that anybody has any question on. Dr. Pyari, is it clear what you have said so far? Any questions you have got? Dr. Pyari? Yes, sir, I wrote everything. I don't have any other doubts. Okay. Where do you teach, Dr. Pyari? I am in Kannur, Sri Narayana College. I am teaching history. Kannur, what, what subject do you teach? History, history. History. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, please uh, once again brief, sir, on the concept of uh, technology become mythic, seen as a part of nature. It is yeah, yeah. that I not yeah, I will explain that. Yeah. See what happens with you know we are human beings. We are being we have been on earth for a long time, and we know that many decisions in life are taken by us, right? We think a lot and then we take decisions. And we know that many times, many things are to be desired by society. So for example, uh, one common example we can give is elections, right? We only decide the government by voting for some party, they form the government. We only decide which business we go at. We go to a particular restaurant that, which is very good, that becomes popular. We sometimes decide who we want to marry. We decide how many children we should have. So we know that in many parts of our life, we have to make decisions. And that is called human agency, right? Agency is a very important word. Agency says that we are the people who can take decisions about ourselves. Human beings, when they exercise agency, they will be more happy and satisfied with life because they are independent, autonomous beings. More you lack the agency, then you become like a slave. When you are a slave, you are not likely to be happy because Decisions about you, decisions in your life are taken by other people. So, for example, in India, one might argue that India is a very unique country where many times the marriage decisions are not taken by the concerned people, but they're taken by their parents. Now, one might argue that when the decision on who you marry is not taken by you, there is a chance that you may end up blaming other people or you may feel bad about a particular situation in life. So, in the context of technology, the example you are talking about is, Initially, we understand something to be technology. We know we can use it. We need not use it. But after some time, the technology becomes a part of nature. We think it's a part of nature. Therefore, we cannot take a decision about it. Now, for example, whether I will use a laptop or not is a matter of my agency. But whether the sun will rise at 6 o'clock today or at 6.30 today, whatever is the sunrise time, I have no choice about it. So whatever is a part of nature, trees are growing, rain is uh, causing floods all this part of nature is something we accept because we cannot change it but what is postman's point is technology becomes like that then we start thinking oh we cannot change technology so we will think google is giving free why should i change google let google be the way it is but we don't think that google is capturing our data stealing our data we should actually regulate google and prevent it from stealing our data but mentally we think that technology has become part of nature so that is what he means by mythic, that technology has become a part of nature. So we cannot change current technology arrangements that are there in society. That is the point that is being made. 
so for example i'll give you an example of a techno uh, can anybody give examples of such technology that it has become so much part of our life that we don't even question it any technologies are like that which make us feel that we don't even think about it we just use it without thinking whether we should use it or not whether the another life is possible without the technology or not there are many examples of such technologies can anybody give some examples mobile now mobile is become like that you know without a mobile it is very difficult to live but even 20 years back i did not have a mobile phone even 20 years back without mobile phone i would but today if you take my mobile phone away we suffer what is called withdrawal symptom it has become like air the air you breathe if you stop me from breathing i will die so mobile phone has become like that so digital technology any other technology other than digital technology refrigerator also has become a part of life because if we don't use a refrigerator we cannot live we don't we don't cook two three times a day we don't shop fresh food every time so refrigerator has become a part of life we accept it that it has to be there any more more fundamental technology anybody can give example very fundamental technologies which are a part of our life which take for granted air conditioner already said more fundamental than that anybody can suggest which you don't even think see the interesting thing is electricity is an example electricity electricity is not one technology but electricity supports lot of technologies so electricity again is taken for granted none of us can go and stay in a place where electricity is not there but even today there are people who live in places where electricity is not available in the home even in india today poor people may be living in slums where electricity is not available or maybe it will just be one bulb in the home so all the appliances that you are having mixer grinder refrigerator oven microwave induction stove they may not be having that in the slum to the extent they are it's not a part of their world but it is a part of our world gas also but i'll tell you one very important technology which is so foundational to our life that none of you can even give it as an example is a clock do you agree with me the clock is technology yes sir but yes sir yes sir <laughs> without that clock we are so governed by time 24 by 7 you know 7 o'clock we have to get up our whole teacher's life is governed by time table without time table can your institution function so imagine what kind of control that clock is having over you supposing we told clock is not going to be there we are going to remove all the clocks not only from our mobile phone but real clock will not be there from tomorrow nobody will go by 8 o'clock 9 o'clock we split the hour into 24 one day into 24 hours one hour into 60 minutes one minute into 60 seconds then we live according to that but before that became in, the clock became part of the life people used to eat when they are hungry if they are not hungry they will not eat but we will eat at 1 o'clock whether you are hungry or not you are to eat at 1 o'clock correct so imagine the life has changed the clock is mythic now it is a part of nature you understand sir, that is what the meaning of mythic so there used to be sand clock and some other devices or something like that yes time was there but sand clock will not be exact no exactly. you cannot tell like uh, the previous speaker in this course he was told next speaker has come sir you have to wind up now right 11 11:30 yes, but <laughs> can you see how much it is ruling our life we cannot have freedom so i am not telling it is bad or good i am just saying we are not even what is the point postman is making we have stopped thinking about it you understand we have stopped thinking that the clock is ruling our lives we may be happy it is ruling our lives and it is giving some discipline to us i am not telling clock is bad but none of you even thought that the clock is technology that has become can i give another example of technology the clothes that we wear is technology there was a animals don't wear clothes but you will not think clothes is technology you think cloth is not part of nature like my hair is on my head my specs is also or my clothes is also part of nature but what is the reason why we must understand what is technology is we always have a choice about technology society must make political choices whether byju should be there or not should be decided by society not by byjus you understand it cannot be that byjus is popular it is giving free content it will come it will destroy education it will destroy colleges and society and life goes on as it is right so whatever is technology should not be allowed to become mythic that is postman's point is that clear that is yes, the other point he is saying technology is too important to leave to technologies technologists or businessmen you cannot allow technology decisions to be made by microsoft 
or by for example recent covid vaccine bill gates was deciding the availability of vaccine which is a very stupid thing bill gates is a businessman how do you allow bill gates to decide that covid vaccine should be available to everybody or not but bill gates decided and that's why covid vaccine people are dying because of covid vaccine not being available covid vaccine was technology but people in the world decided that we will proprietize the covid vaccine we will not allow companies to make it without the uh, license so people can die of uh, covid but we will proprietize it that is a decision that we took that was a decision technology decision that we did which resulted in people dying we should be aware of that we should not say oh, that is the way things will be why should we not a proprietary technologies that's only way technology can be created that's not true because when saul invented the polio vaccine he did not patent the polio vaccine he told how can i patent polio vaccine i cannot prevent people from consuming polio vaccine because it's a matter of life and death how society has changed sock when he made the polio vaccine he said i will not proprietize it covid was much more dangerous still we allowed it to become proprietary so as a society we have degenerated in the way we are handling technology that is the point that postman is making anybody has any other question any other comment ramesh dr ramesh are you able to follow what my explanations are dr ramesh okay sir where do you teach dr ramesh um uh, teaching government college manandawadi Ka kerala which district kerala vayanad vayanad in vayanad okay fine anybody has any other question dr means dr sj means i'm just calling out names to make sure that people are awake and listening that's all <laughs> it's a very transparent ploy dr means are you there yes sir yes sir where do you teach madam Uh, so i am uh, serving as assistant professor in the university department of anthropology ranchi university ranchi in jharkhand so which place so uh, ranchi jharkhand ranchi jharkhand jharkhand okay okay fine i have not been to ranchi it's one of the few uh, states i have not traveled at all so uh, in, any doubts madam on what we have discussed so far on technology no sir no sir is it clear yes sir okay thank you so much so the last line in the slide is very important so what i am saying is we must understand technology has to belong to us today the reason why we are afraid is that technology seems to be controlling us facebook is controlling us google is controlling us amazon is controlling us byju's will control us instead of that if we say that we want to control technology the first step of that must be we must start owning the technology so ownership of technology becomes a very very important consideration today do you own google we google meet we are meeting on google meet do we own this google meet no we are not owning you are not owning it is controlled by google google can tomorrow tell i will double the price google can tell tomorrow for india i will not allow google meet to be used they can tell anything that they want but whatever they decide will be accepted by us because we have no control over google or google meet okay so that is the point that i am making so let us go ahead and see what it what does it mean so we have to go back to knowledge lot of digital technologies about information and communication right that's why we call it ict information communication technology it is about knowledge creation knowledge sharing what uh, our uh, uh dr pinky spoke about copyrights patents trademarks so copyright they are all con con connected to the knowledge generation and knowledge ownership now what is the position that i am taking and as it for change we try to promote this thinking amongst uh, people in society and especially teachers is teachers have to think that knowledge is belonging to society knowledge is not owned by an individual knowledge is not owned by an institution so any area you take whether it is philosophy or sociology or anthropology or even management any discipline you take the knowledge is not owned by one individual or one by, by one institution it belongs to everybody in society and society has benefited because whenever things have been invented like i told about polio vaccine it was invented and given to the whole world alexander fleming invented penicillin he gave it to the whole world so whenever you invent a resource and you give it to the whole world the whole world benefits but digital technology unfortunately is proprietary when we say proprietary it means 
the company that has produced this technology it does not give it to the world it says i will be the owner of this technology i will allow you to use it for using it i may either charge money or i may not charge money so google gmail is free of cost google maps for us is free of cost google translate is free of cost but byju's may be charging some money or microsoft may be charging some money for the office so but whether you pay money or don't pay money either case you do not own the technology it is owned by the company even if we pay money for it and we have no choice in deciding how it will be used and to counter this so in 1983 there was a professor in uh, mit uh, america just looking up the schools it okay thank you so uh, mit professor his name was richard stallman he said if technology is going to be proprietary only companies are going to use it society is going to suffer a lot so he started a new movement called the free software movement here the uh, free software means whichever we can freely do whatever you want to do with it it belongs to us so that is the uh, movement that dr richard stallman professor richard stallman started in 1983 so it is going to be how many years now it is going to be 40 years i think no it will be 40 years now in 2023 after this movement has been started okay so uh, in this case of free software what happens is the technology is owned by everybody so everybody can use it everybody can make a copy of it you can give it to other people like the way knowledge can be like you are teaching a subject you are giving notes you can tell the student you please give the notes to others also so you can freely share it i allow you to freely share it i am not going to prevent you from sharing it i am not going to prevent you from making changes to it so you can do that without a problem so that is called free and open technologies in india also as far as software is concerned some governments are promoting this kind of a free and open source technology in school education space kerala is a leader in india so kerala started in 2002 itself the teachers told the government that we don't want to use microsoft office because microsoft is under the control so office is under the control of microsoft we cannot decide we cannot make copies of microsoft office because everything is owned by microsoft so if i have 10 computers in my office in my school i have to buy microsoft office for each of those 10 computers and in kerala in 2002 they went for free and open source software so instead of microsoft operating system we are using the linux system so even in my computer we are using a software operating system called linux linux we can install on any number of any number of computers likewise instead of microsoft office there is a software called libreoffice libreoffice is the software i am using so you are seeing that i am using slides but i am not using microsoft powerpoint i am using libreoffice impress so these free and open source software you can make any number of copies and you can give to any number of people that you want without any constraint here the word free has to be understood very clearly free means azad free means mukt you know it doesn't mean muft very time we confuse free software means we are don't pay money for it but the real meaning of the word free software is mukta software which you can have the full mukti to do whatever you want to do with it okay so this is the kind of software that we need to use in education so that it is under our control we can decide how to use it so for example it for change we don't use google meet we don't use microsoft teams because they are all proprietary we use a video conferencing platform called big blue button big blue button is a free and open source platform you can install in your college server advantage is you do nobody will tell you 40 minutes is free 40 minutes after 40 minutes you have to pay for it like zoom i am told sometimes there's a 40 minutes is free more than 40 minutes you have to pay money but big blue button software once you install on your own server in your own college you can use it infinitely as much as you want every teacher can have her own bbb big blue button room without having to pay anybody any money or without any constraint imposed by anybody so this is all called the free and open source technology where the ownership is with the public like your private institution public institution like that we can understand there is private software or proprietary software and public software which is free and open source software we can also call it as swatantra software mukta software azad software now in school education it has become more and more popular but colleges still are using the proprietary software technologies yeah any questions on this slide so i just had a doubt um yeah. so if if it's free and open source does it also save our data and can it use our data like when you say free and open source we are not free from that factor right 
that's a very good point madam so when we use the word free and open there are two words we're using we're using the word free we're also using the word open open means what the source code is open so you can study the source code now microsoft office we cannot study the so the software because the software is hidden by microsoft company they are owning the they are holding the source code source code means the actual uh, software the lines of code that is there but in the case of libreoffice the entire source code is available in the public domain when in free and open source software the it is open it is available in the public domain it is not possible to collect data because you can see the source code itself whether data is being collected or not therefore it is not easy or it is not possible in the case of free and open source software to collect data from us so for example big blue button i was telling is an alternative to microsoft teams or to google meet in the case of google meet we do not know whether it's collecting data for example now we are having this meeting google may be collecting this data google may be storing this data google may be selling this data to others we don't know but when we are using big blue button we're installing the big blue button on our own server and the big blue button source code is available in the public domain so somebody can i cannot do it i am not having the ability but some software engineer can study the code and say oh is it collecting data or not collecting data so therefore open source software they will not be collecting data because it is easily discovered and it is not one company that's collecting the data right whoever is installing the software can use the software so there is no incentive to collect data with free and open source technologies dr pinky does it yes sir, yes sir thank you thank you for this information so data stealing cannot be done with open source software this is a very important reason to use open source so for example you are all using google search engine right are all of you using google search engine yes uh, so google yes, search sir. engine when you are giving the search it is automatically collecting your data because as you type the word only it will tell what you are typing right so it is knowing already that uh, you know dr govind is liking this particular coffee so whenever he will search he will search for that coffee or dr bhupati is searching for something else so google search engine is collecting the search information of every individual in this world and storing that information with the intention of commercializing it but i don't use google search engine i use a search engine called duckduckgo i'm going to type that word on the chat so duckduckgo is a free and open source search engine so you can go to duckduckgo.com i use duckduckgo search engine only on my computer i you i have google search engine also but i will prefer not to use google search i use google search only if i am not satisfied with the results of duckduckgo search engine but 90% of the time i use duckduckgo search engine only it is my default search engine on my a uh, browser similarly i don't use google chrome google chrome again is proprietary i use firefox you must have all heard of the word firefox so i use a web browser firefox in firefox i'm using duckduckgo search engine so all of us data is being collected by google search engine and google chrome and you know therefore i my data is not collected to the extent that i use duckduckgo search engine and i use firefox open source a web browser even on my phone i have put firefox and duckduckgo I don't use Google Chrome and Google search engine on my phone also. On my phone also, I can have free and open source software along with my computer. Any other question from anybody? Sir, excuse me. Yes, sir. Sir, is there any guarantee that in future they may not change the rules and all of a sudden they may say, oh no, we are not going to offer anything free. Everything will be in premium. If you want to stay back, you pay, otherwise leave. Actually, this is a very, very good question. Actually, so the difference between uh, free and open source and freeware—that is the two different terms. Doctor Victor is saying the license of the free and open source software will tell that it cannot be made proprietary. So that is a license. So, for example, I'm using LibreOffice. In the LibreOffice copyright itself, it will be told this LibreOffice cannot be in the future also made proprietary. So once it is free and open source, it is permanently uh, free and open source. but freeware is the other kind which uh, dr victor is saying freeware i'm giving free of cost but control is with me so tomorrow i can charge you so for example gmail is freeware google search is freeware facebook is freeware in that case although i'm not paying money now control is with the company tomorrow they can simply tell i will charge money for it but big blue button video conferencing platform is open source in the source code in the copyright itself they will tell this will always be free it will never be made uh, proprietary it will never be made non free and open so the license of it protects it for in uh, perpetuity for posterity that's why linux which is free and open source operating system 
it was made in 30 years back or 35 years back today also it is free and open only it cannot become proprietary does that answer your question sir legally it is prevented from becoming proprietary but that is only if it is free and open source and the license is called gpl so this is a technical term it's called general public license gpl so if the software license is gpl it can never become proprietary later on so linux is gpl LibreOffice is GPL, DuckDuckGo is GPL, Big Blue Button is GPL. All the software I use on my computer is free and open source only. I don't use proprietary software. Thank you. So these are the examples that I already mentioned to you. So I, in my own computer, I am not using any of the proprietary software. So Kerala schools, for example, government schools in Kerala, government schools in Tamil Nadu, many states of India in the government school system, they're using free and open source technology only and features wise it is the same as uh, uh, sorry it's GNU public license so uh, this as far as the uh, computer is concerned there are lots of free and open source software that is available that we can use quality is as good if not better than the property sometimes you may think oh microsoft word is very good but libreoffice may not be equally good but i find that the software is more or less the same it is like one car is Maruti, one car is Hyundai. Both of them do the same job. But Hyundai car is owned by Hyundai company. Some other car is owned by us. So it is called a public car. Anybody can make it. Anybody can copy it. Anybody can give it to others. That is the definition of free and open source. So in your own institutions, you should start promoting free and open source software. Tell your management that no need to go for Microsoft. We can go for Linux. We can go for LibreOffice. Tomorrow you buy 20 computers. No need to pay money to Microsoft. You can save that money and instead of that, use it for buying hardware. So that is why many institutions, they don't buy the proprietary software. They will straight away use the free and open source software. Jnana Sondari, madam, is it clear? Any questions from you? You're saying yes. Yes, sir. So do you think free software is good or bad? What is the problem with free and open source software, madam? So being an education uh, background, uh, we are uh, very little uh, knowledge and experience about uh, software is very low. Hmm. But we are learning a uh, lot of things in this platform, very new, sir. So hmm. we are learning now. Yes, madam. So, but uh, do you think it is uh, institution should use free and open source? In your own institution, you should be promoting free and open source instead of proprietary? Yes, sir. Yes, of course, sir. It is useful for the student uh, community also, sir. Yes, of yeah. course, sir. For teacher community also. For example, Moodle, what we are using as LMS in this course, Moodle, that is also free and open, which means if tomorrow you are already wants... using Moodle, sir. We are yeah. already using Moodle wonderful. in our university. Wonderful, wonderful. You are using Moodle because it's free and open source. Supposing it is proprietary, then you cannot install Moodle on your computer. You have to go only to the company. Whenever you are using proprietary software, it is always belonging to the company. Company only will decide how much you can use, what you can use. But when it is free and open source software, decision about the software is made by the institution only. So Moodle installation, anybody, any faculty who has joined in this course, they want to start Moodle in their institution. No need to ask anybody's permission. No need to pay any money. Moodle is available online on a website. Download the Moodle to your computer, install Moodle and start offering courses. It is as simple as that. Of course, technical expertise is required. So it is not that, like Madam told, we are college faculty. We may not be expert technologically to install model, configure model. But in all our institutions, some technical person will be there. So with the help of the technical person, we can tell, install the model and start using model. So my colleague uh, Rakesh, on the chat window, he has typed the uh, one link. This link, we are giving a lot of free software uh, training to teachers in schools and colleges also, even teacher education institutions, which are offering two year beard and four year beard. We are training the students on free and open source software. All the software tools that we are teaching, we have made a user manual. It's available on the link that you can see on the chat window. So it is called commonly used applications. Even the learn, you can share that explore an application link, Rakesh sir, on the chat. You might have shared it earlier, but explore application also you can share. Yeah, any questions so far? So these are all the different kinds of tools. I'm going to show, uh, these are very important, you know, for example, in our own course, 
we are going to we are teaching you only open source software like for example tomorrow we are having a two two session training on mind mapping tool which is using a software called free plane this mind mapping tool is very useful for all the faculty it doesn't matter whether you're teaching management or economics or philosophy if free teacher can use mind mapping tool or concept mapping tool because for your particular topic you can make a concept map so in this particular course what we are going to help all of you learn the free software applications that we are teaching you to create the content this content will be for the topic that you have selected so each of you has chosen a topic already so if you see the screen gravitation that's called the mind map so you can see on the screen on the right side concept mapping at the time we were using a software called free mind now we are using a software called free plane but same it makes concept maps similarly below that you can see audacity Maybe you had a session on audio resource creation. I don't know that you use Audacity, but Audacity is a free and open source software. You can download to your computer and start creating audio materials with it. So you are interviewing somebody, uh, you are having a panel discussion, audio, all that resources you can capture. Likewise, video editing is also possible. On the left side, there is a software for recording videos. We will be doing video editing, video recording training for you uh, two days, I think two, three days this week later. Rakesh sir will be teaching a tool called Voco Screen through which you can make videos. So you have to make the video, you have to make the mind map for the topic you have selected. And in the discussion forum, you have to discuss it and you have to submit it as an assignment in Moodle. For our course uh, satisfying our assessment, you need to do all that. So whatever we are teaching from IT for Change, we are doing the Voco Screen video uh, recording application, free plane uh, concept mapping application. You also have learned a little bit about text editing, audio editing in other sessions. So in our co in, for our assessment, what we will request all of you to do, you have to, for the topic you have selected, create these resources, mind map resource, video resource, audio resource, uh, PPT if you want, text document, and you will be submitting it in the module in this course itself. That will be assessed by us as a You will also discuss it in the discussion forum. So all, both these things we will be doing uh, today itself, uh, my, uh, we will be putting it on the discussion forum. You have to share your topic, you have to discuss on the discussion forum, and you also have to submit your uh, resources uh, by 27th. You have to submit, which is the second last day of the course. 28th, the course is ending. So, 27th, exactly next Monday, you will have to submit your e content that you have created on your topic, both video e content, mind map e content, as well as some text document you will prepare on the e content. Yes, so that is called free and open source. Similarly, like software, there is also something called content. So just like software can be free and open source, content can also be free and open source. Now, this is very important to understand. Normally, we go to the internet, we download a photo from the internet, we put it in our material. It is not correct because the copyright of that video or the copyright of that photo may not allow it to be used by us. So just like there is proprietary software which doesn't prevent which prevents us from sharing it there is proprietary content also normally when you open a book it will be on the copyright clause it will be said you cannot lend this book to others you cannot share this book with others so that is the proprietary content similarly if you go to the internet and you download something that is going to be proprietary only but instead of proprietary we can make it like open source software we can make it open content also and that is called open education resource, OER, that is called open content. So whatever content we make, we must make it such that other people can share it freely. And that, that for that, there is licensing called Creative Commons license. So this is the last slide. There is a software license called Creative Commons. Earlier, we talked about software license GPL, right, which makes the software permanently free and open. Similarly, for content, we have to use a copyright clause called Creative Commons. So whenever you are making any content, you are making a PPT, you are making a video, you are making an audio, you are making a mind map, you must put the copyright clause for that is Creative Commons. It is called CC, Creative Commons, CC in short. Minute you put Creative Commons, it means other people can use it freely. And that is called Open Education Resource or OER. So you have heard of Wikipedia, right? The entire Wikipedia website is OER. So if you go to the site on the bottom, it will tell the license for this content is Creative Commons CC. So if you see the red color uh, font on the screen, the copyright used in Wikipedia is CC by SA. CC by SA means it other people can take it, but they should give credit. That by means credit. So let's just close the door. Keep it closed. The, the, 
it means you have to give credit to the creator that is called the by clause and sa means it should be shared again and again as open resource only so that is the creative commons clause cc by sa i will share a small video that i made which explains the cc by sa clause also so whatever content you are going to create and submit for this course you must mention author dr gunashekaran or dr nyana soundari and below that you have to tell copyright cc by sa when you say copyright cc by sa it means other people can freely use the content they can make their own course they can use it in their teaching they can translate it to their own language they can do whatever they want to do with you but when you put the by clause it means they have to give credit to you this content was created by dr nyana soundari in tamil i am translating it into hindi i am translating it into english i do give credit to the author but i can freely translate it i can freely use it for my purposes so that is called creative commons licensing and generically it's called oer or open education resources okay we have 10 more minutes in this session so i quickly wrapped up the oer part if there are any questions any comments we can discuss for the next 10 minutes before we wind up at 1 o'clock anybody has any questions is it clear teacher sir some of these uh, uh, open source softwares can be used on uh, windows platform as well right that is right that is right so the open source software people they have made one version for linux one version for windows also so if we take audacity software audacity software is for making audio material language teachers will find audacity very useful because they can use it for creating audio materials for language learning so audacity is available on linux audacity is available on windows also but the software is different so on operating system it will be different on windows also you have many free and open source software for example mozilla firefox will work on windows also libreoffice is available on windows also so if even if you have windows operating system libreoffice software you can install for creating like ms word excel powerpoint libreoffice also has excel uh, word and powerpoint it is called libreoffice writer libreoffice calc and libreoffice impress so that is the answer then in teacher education uh nana sundari madam this i had shared this uh, slide no this particular slide these are all for the different subjects you can have software which we use for the teacher education programs so there is a tool called marble for teaching geography it's a wonderful digital atlas you can create lessons with that in science there are many more tools so there is a tool called geogebra for mathematics if you're teaching economics for example some of the economics tab chapters will have statistics and mathematics you can use geogebra for teaching economics then there is stellarium for teaching the galactic system so there are many software applications available for teaching subjects different subjects but for social sciences mainly i will think that you can use audio and video material so if you see this for social science teachers mainly we will be making videos so if you are if you are let's say a history teacher you can create a video on a particular historical set of events you can do on your own you can make a video material for that uh, video resource uh, you can use the software called what we are going to teach on uh, later this week called voco screen a uh, link for marble all the software links are available in one place uh, rakesh sir have you shared the explore an application link already shared i think uh, explore an application he has shared it so marble everything will be available in this particular page i'm just sending it again this particular page has got yes, all the free and open source applications what i shared now so marble will be there even this uh, audio editing is very useful video editing is very useful concept mapping is very useful already i think rakesh sir shared the links for installing this software in your computer so tomorrow first two sessions in the morning we are going to be teaching you concept mapping extremely useful skill extremely useful i will recommend strongly to each and every faculty member attending this program after 10 years you will remember me for telling this concept mapping will change your life because it is a tool for thinking i use concept mapping every time for example i wrote an article for on exam system in karnataka they are doing going to introduce board exams for class 5 i wrote an article for the local paper so first thing i will do is make a concept map because a concept map will tell all my points how i will arrange it organize it so you all should make for every topic before you teach the topic first you make a concept map for the topic it is become habit for you it will change your life i can guarantee you that your thinking process will become more and more better with the concept mapping tomorrow my colleague uh, marzia will be teaching free plane which you can install on windows also you can install on linux also 
I think it is available on Mac also, if I'm not mistaken. And you have to submit all these in the 27th in Moodle. We will give a Moodle assignment. You have to submit the content created on Moodle, including the concept map, including the video that we are going to teach you. And you will also write a text document. Basically, you are going to make a course content for your topic. Nyana Sondri, madam, what is your topic you have taken? Sir, pedagogy of teaching English. That is too big English a topic. Education. Okay, very big a, topic. A small content like grammar or any other one, poem or any other one. Yeah, Most maybe you take like teaching poetry. poetry. Maybe you take a yes. unit called teaching poetry. Yes. So sir. teaching poetry, you will make a course outline. Objectives of teaching poetry, you know, different methods of teaching poetry, assessment for teaching poetry. Like that, you will make a course outline. You will make a concept map also. You can make a small video also ab yes, uh, about teaching poetry. Maybe uh, it can be a particular poem you are teaching or about generally how do you write a poem? It could be anything. You will make a short video also. So video, concept map, and text document, you will be submitting it in Moodle. You will also have a discussion forum. We are going to create one now. All of you have to participate in the discussion forum. That is going to be necessary for your grading. And we are making it compulsory because then only you will learn, right? Otherwise, the learning will not happen simply by listening to me. Learning will happen only when you do it practically. So discussion forum participation and Moodle content submission are both compulsory. Any yes. other questions anybody has got? We have five minutes more. Performance of the software. So Lokesh sir is asking. See, it is very difficult to uh, connect performance and whether it's proprietary or free and open. Performance of a proprietary software also can be good. Performance of a free and open source software can also be good because what is the difference between proprietary and free and open? It is only the copyright clause. And Dr. Pinky mentioned it in the beginning of this session, right? The copyright is the condition for proprietary or free and open. So same software I can make proprietary, same software I can make it free and open, depends on the licensing. Supposing I will tell in the licensing, this software belongs to me. Nobody can change it. Nobody can study it. You can only use it. That is called proprietary. That is like your Microsoft Office or like your Gmail. But I can also tell this software I made, anybody can use it. You can do whatever you want. You can change the software. You can translate the software, you can give it to others, then it is free and open. Now, which performance is going to be better? It's difficult to say. Some people argue free and open source will become better because many people can improve it. If there is a problem with the software, anybody can make the changes to the software. Proprietary, only the owner can make the change to the software. So that is a difference between proprietary and free and open. So tomorrow, if the company closes, proprietary software, you cannot use it because the company is closed down. But free and open, even if the company that is making Moodle closes down, some other company can take the Moodle software and start making changes because source code is available in the public. So that way, free and open software is better for society. It is not good for making big profits, which Google makes or Amazon makes. But free and open source is good for all of us because we control it. We can make changes to it. In IT for change, we have done translation also. For example, software interface. Now you see this Google Meet is in English, correct? So big blue button was also in English, but we converted the interface of big blue button to Kannada. We made a Hindi interface so that if you're teaching a Tamil medium student, why should the Tamil medium student see software in English? They should see the software in Tamil only, you know? So if you see this, for example, one software called GeoGebra, I'll show you, we made in Tamil also. So if you see this, can you see this? Nyana Sondri, madam. This is GeoGebra in Tamil. Who made it? We made it. Because the source code is available to us, we can only do the translation of the software. So free and open source software is better for education because all of us can contribute to it. It is ours, so we can make it better. Lokesh sir, does it answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because, sir, I was just trying to find out uh, because most of our purchases are through GEM, sir. So mm -hmm. And it comes with inbuilt uh, Windows only. So, you can so change it. Like okay. Kerala is using Gem also, no? Kerala, Kerala is using Gem, but Kerala doesn't buy Windows at all. They only go for Linux. So in the specification, you have to tell that I want a computer with the Linux platform. Linux is free of cost, so it will, you will save your money also. Many computers are available with the Linux platform. So you can give the specification. I want the computer. I want to buy desktop. I want to buy laptop. I want to buy it with the Linux operating system. Like that, you have to give in the Gem. Many state governments are only using free and open source. So therefore, GEM will have some option for free and open source also. Even institutions, not only governments, but also institutions. You can try, check, look, yes, sir. Explore try. it. And, uh, yes, sir. We'll do the next purchase. We'll check with the trace. Yeah. Okay. Which, which state you are in, sir? 
Sir, I am in Assam, sir. I am working in Assam Central University. Assam is one of the leaders of free and open source in school education. There is a IAS officer called M.K. Yadava. He was in the forest department. Kaziranga Sanctuary was under him. So M.K. Yadava popularized open source in Assam. I have come to Gauhati to conduct teacher training for teachers. I have taught them GeoGebra. The same GeoGebra you are seeing on the screen. I have taught to the Assam school teachers. So, therefore, Assam is also free software is quite popular. Ubuntu operating system is used in schools. You can find out, sir. Thank you, sir. But of course, your central university, that will be different. But still, you can find out. My colleague Rakesh sir has also given link on the screen. If you are buying a laptop for yourself, don't buy with Windows. Unnecessarily, you will be spending money on Windows. You can buy with Linux only. And Linux is very advantage because when we install Linux software in the computer, we will be installing some 300 software packages with Linux. 300. All free and open source. See, Windows, you cannot. Windows is closed. You cannot add anything to it. But Linux is open. So what we do, we take Linux, we keep on putting software into it. So some 300 packages will be available in the one software. And that is the explore an application. All that packages are available. For school teachers, we give it. They love it. Because within the operating system, they get so many more software free of cost. So GeoGebra, Fed, Calcium, Marble, everything will be installed in the system automatically. No need to install separately. That advantage is there. Any other questions? Just one